your princess Ilka, okay, sweet and sweet and sweet and sweet. And you want to know the story. <laughs> you want to know the story. And I will tell you, I just don't really know where to begin. Because the story actually does not start where I met the woodchopper. It starts way before. Like a Catholic said, one damn thing after another. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Stripped off everywhere. You cannot believe how much I was stripped off. So here I was like a bleeding bird. Again, with nothing. Like nothing. I mean, literally nothing. So a friend offered me a job with a friend or a client, which I had to take because I needed a job. <laughs> I had been stripped off my papers too, which I already had had by the government because of ineptitude, ineptitude. I had all the papers in order, everything was clear. But because of some ineptitude, he took them away from me and gave me a different one because he wasn't really thinking clear. As I went to clarify everything for myself. In other words, I was almost already like safe and sound in Mexico in every single sense of the way. But then I wasn't, <laughs> and I wasn't. Yeah, because some bureaucrat who didn't understood the system where he was working looked at his little list and, and thought, one, two, three, four, five, okay, nine, that's the one you need now. And he took the best away from me. And he did not explain what it meant. And I came from Germany. And there are officials from the government that actually told you the truth. So... I didn't have, suddenly had not a permit to work anymore. To my surprise. That was a complete wrong move. I did not know. Now I know better. But it took a long while. It took a leak to make me understand what it is. It took a leak to express it to me how he, he should have had handled it, the official. But didn't, so he amended it. But it took us such a long time to get there too. So I had no work permit. I had no money. I had no house. I had nothing. And here I get a job. Well, of course I take it. I take that job. And it was lame because it was in sales. I don't like sales. Never mind, Zilke. Arrimate la bota, man. Yeah, put the belt on, shut up, and do your work. So Ephraim. She was this young entrepreneur, really handsome too. Of course, married with kids. I mean, I've never met his wife and children, but I'm, I'm sure they're good. And he gives me a job. He was selling productos chemicals, wholesale, chemical products imported by my friend Gerardo, who was German half, who I had met in Hamburg. He came a year later. So he imported the, the, the fat containers with it, and then Ephraim bought fat quantities from him and distributed them. But as I arrived, Ephraim said, oh, it's okay, yeah, well, you know what? I have a new product I want to try out. So why don't you go ahead and go over there for a week, which was, which was Guanajuato, and take the uh, curso de pegado. Yeah, of course, to learn about the product, the gluing shoes it was. Who am I to say no to that? So he sent me all the way there for a week and I learned about the most boring thing you can possibly imagine from my own yeah, para su persona, man. In my person, ugh. But I did it and then I came back and then he said, yeah, go sell now. And that's it. So, yeah, me agarré la sección amarilla. I literally took the yellow pages. I opened the page and looked, where are there? Zapaterias. Shoe factories. Who's, who fabric shoes, who could possibly buy the product. So I found a nice little place, Una Colonia, and I started contacting. But little I knew that it was, let's say, in the red district, so to speak. It was like the worst barrio neighborhood ever, which of course I had no clue about, because it's just a map. 
so here I'm all she can find going to Lacuna del Lobo, man. Went right into the devil's throat, man. That's what I did all alone. And I had been working in an office before, so I learned how to dress in Mexico, which is very, very different than in Germany. There is a dress code, and it has to be strictly obeyed. So I looked like a little doll. Everything, makeup, nails, lipstick, all that shit I did not use in Hamburg, in Germany, ever. And skirts, either, didn't use them. And high heels, never. Nothing of the sort. So I did that, I had done that, and I did it. So here I went, and it was horrible. I mean, I was so out of the scene. I was so unexpected. Like, literally, the devil had an angel coming by that the bosses, they looked at me in such awe, they couldn't even neglect or reject me. They just had to look, what the shit is going on here? That's like so weird. I mean, flabbergasted for saying the least. In Mexico, it takes a while to work a plan. And even if they want to buy your product, imagine here some filthy stinking person, or even if he isn't filthy, sitting bored as shit behind his desk. And suddenly this angel comes and promises him to come back as long as he wants to because she needs to sell something and he can hold her back. Do you understand the mechanics here? He just had to say the word, oh sure, absolutely, yes, please come on Thursday or Friday. And of course one had to go, that's Mexico, it's not Germany. So he could be having visited him for the next years and keep me just enough until the next one, until the next one. No, they had party. They had their soap over right there in front of this, their own desks. That's what the scene was, literally. A frightened little deer. Yeah, in the devil's gulch. And honestly, the woodchopper came to my rescue. Because I lost that shit. It was horrible, even if they hid it, because those had a little bit of education, because they owned companies. So I did not feel they were undressing me with their look. But it was horrible. Now I put them all in their place, with my innocent, I guess. So what chopper came. One good day, I walk into Efrain's office, because he called me in, my, my boss. And here were two other guys standing. A very tall, probably super handsome man, slim, and another one, a bearded dude. Yeah, I look like Santa Claus, but not gray hair yet. Yeah, Santa Claus is not sexy, guys. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it's nothing. But I barely noticed them, and if I said this and that, and then he sent me back out. And it could. Yeah, I don't know. One of the, the, the handsome one, he was probably the engineer who had that glue thing going on in Guanajuato, like in hindsight. And they were kind of friends. And the other one, I don't know, I don't really remember how it all came along, but I remember like we were sitting somewhere and we were eating and he was talking to me. And now he's offering me a job. And he's offering me a job with a very, very honorable product. He said, I need to install offices in Mexico City. I already have the offices, he said. And I need to have, you know, a base to sell my product. And that was Lambrin Decorativo. And that is like the wood you put on the walls to have it nice and beautifully decorated. And he had all sorts of different woods and different colors. I like wood. I like wood so much. It's so beautiful. Yeah, from nasty devil and glue shoes factories to what that was like heaven to me and he was friendly and he took a moment to talk with me he showed me the office and i liked it but like so we went here and there and where else we went to food then he gave me a car and then he gave me another car I mean, his car, just to drive it in, t in, in the city. Because he came and then he left back to Oaxaca where he lived and where he had the, yeah, the production going. Well, I soon noticed that I wasn't being faithful to Efrain and his company. But then again,
Yeah, why you call him the wood chopper? Because of something that Maud Raoul said at the very end. My my brother. I know he said some one he said if a person is uneducated, sometimes I say knuckle. <clears throat> maybe vulgar, but maybe not exactly. Then he's always like that. Once dummy, always dummy. Once inadequate, always inadequate. Once not elegant, always not elegant. So basically he was some kind of wood chopper who had no clue about how to actually deal with a lady. And that's exactly what happened. Well, he too wanted to import another product, which was actually a very cool product. And for such, he had to go to Spain. Of course, I wanted to go to Europe. But I did say no a few times. Because I just wanted to make clear that there would not be any misunderstandings in me going there. On the other hand, of course, naturally, a person like that, a woodchopper, doesn't go alone to Europe. He is afraid to go to Europe. Why would you go to Europe? So he needed someone who had them out. And that's what happened. At that point, I thought he was also my friend. I very much liked the idea of doing that office in, in I think it was like a little by yeah. An apartment it was, so I'm good at those things. Figure figuring it all out and everything. I'm good at everything. The PFR can do it all. It seemed like a decent business without needing to be bothered. Yeah, I wasn't really molested but just about to. By anybody else. But of course I also had to read the signs. The first guy he gave me was horrible. I don't know on which hole he took that one out. It was old and stinking. And then he gave me the other one which was his. Which was a good car. Yeah, why even attempt to give me the horrible car if we were friends? That wasn't nice of him. It's like pointing out to abuse in hindsight, considering his plans. That was a super shit movement, considering his plans or any respect. So naturally, <clears throat> by the time the Europe trip came, my car was kind of parked somewhere. Falling apart, maybe. I don't know. But as I came back, well, of course I had nothing. I had lost this job, of course. <laughs> Idiot. Of course I could not use the car anymore, so back to mine. And with Ephraim, of course I hadn't been there yet, so no more jobs either. And then I had parallel to that. I hadn't told you yet. I had attended a semester at La UNAM, which is the national university in Mexico City, a semester to prepare for my entrance to the university. Another one of those shitload movements from before, because that had been my plan ever since I arrived in Mexico. Another one of those shitload movements, man, from the family I had arrived to, who harassed me not to go, literally. So here I was, finally, I had achieved. And at the office they told me, no, no, in order for you to study at Lao Nam, since you are a foreigner, you have to also accomplish the other courses, which are three subjects. It, it takes about a semester. And that is the Organización Política de México, Political Organization of Mexico, Historia de México, Mexican History, yeah, so all around that. So I had done that. 
I had finished it as we went to Europe. Now I came back. No more woodchopper work, no more Ephraim work. And Ephraim on top, as he saw me like bleeding deer when I arrived at his office, yeah, recommended by his provider and another client. His provider, Gerardo, my friend, and another client, Maripaz, who also was Gerardo's girlfriend by now. He had to give me that job, but it didn't matter to him. He had enough space. He had nothing to lose, not that he paid me. <laughs> he took, he did not take any interest in me. Regular interest? Not at all. It didn't matter to him what I was doing or what I wasn't doing. Because they pay you when you sell something. And I did not sold any Pegado ever. I sold something else, which of course I could change then. I sold, I only sold, I only sold one product, I think. And that was um, almond oil for Revlon. Yeah, the cosmetic Revlon. I say to them and this. Yeah, he never paid me that either. So I wasn't feeling particularly like vulnerable in that regard. But he saw me bleeding, bleeding deer coming in. And he said, you know what, Zuka, my brother has an apartment and it's empty, it's vacant. Why don't you rent it? I mean, I give it to you cheap. Very, very cheap he gave it to me. Because he would not rent it to anybody else. Because it wasn't really for rent. Because you don't rent things to people because people mistreat them and take them from you. But I was... You know, a trustworthy person, I am. So I rented it very cheap. So yeah, I come back from Mexico. No, I come back from Europe to Mexico. No, I had no more job with wood, wood chop. I did not have more job with Ephraim. I did not have a car. And I also did not have an apartment because now since I did not work with Ephraim, I had to give that up. That's honor code. And for pointing it out, what happened, I also got the yellow envelope from Launam. That's the one... Where you tell, where they tell you that all your efforts are fructiferous, not fructiferous. I wasn't accepted. Alto gold for ego, I said, smiling almost. Yeah, well, we are sarcastic or cynical in Mexico. Or oh, ego harmed and hurt. Not really. But yes, man, I wasn't accepted. No what? Penniless, homeless, jobless. But you know what? You guys, I felt so strong. Internally, something felt really strong because I could have, you know, but I couldn't. It wasn't even a question in my life. Give in to some idiot? Become some... For me, that's being a whore? No, thank you very much. So I felt my dignity, man. I felt so strong. So fortified inside with all the poverty I faced. I do not ask if that was the right thing to do or not, because there is no question in my life. It is unquestionable. The question in my life doesn't even arise. And if you would not have yelled at me, Vasakir, Vasakir, you're gonna fall, you're gonna fall, I wouldn't even have noticed that that was a thing. <laughs> I guess you wonder where I've been. I search to find the love within I came back to let you know Got a thing for you And I can't let go My friends wonder what is wrong with me Well, I'm in a daze From your love, you see 